how the narcissist puts you in a trance. The narcissist creates an alternate reality. They create a reality that is different from the one you had before they targeted you. They create a prolonged fantasy world, which is like something that could have been created by a child. It's fairyland. It's the land of make-believe. They pretend that things are better, different, or more exciting than they really are. When really, it exists solely in their imagination. But as their target, you may often mistake it for reality because you are under their spell. You are in a half conscious state where you may experience an absence of response to external stimuli because you have been induced by hypnosis. You have been induced into a state of consciousness where you have lost the power of voluntary action and you have become highly responsive to suggestion or direction. They have put you in a mental state like sleep where they can easily influence your thoughts because the hypnosis increases your attention, concentration and suggestibility where you've become inclined to accept and act on the narcissist's suggestions you become inclined to readily and uncritically adopt their ideas, beliefs, attitudes and actions. The narcissist constructs shared fantasies. They create and sustain your consciousness through the sharing of narratives, through representations of particular situations, in such a way as to reflect or conform to an overarching set of aims or values. They create unrealistic and improbable mental images in response to your psychological needs. They construct an alternate universe and then they pull you into it through the use of hypnosis, which then causes you to closely follow and observe the ideas and representations until you then believe and follow their practices, until you then follow their general rules which are intended to regulate your behaviors and thoughts. They indoctrinate you. They teach you to accept their set of beliefs uncritically so that you accept the shared fantasy as being real. They subject your emotions and your mental actions and processes of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thoughts, experiences, and your senses, to their urgent needs and demands, to their measurable factors, which form and define their system and set the conditions of its operations. It sets the limits and boundaries which define the scope of the particular process or activity the shared fantasy disturbs and distorts your mind. It produces mood changes and gives you a sense of heightened awareness. It changes your brain function and results in alterations in your perception. 
It gives you a mental twist, bias or quirk. It gives you a biased and twisted attitude and judgment. Which then creates a peculiar aspect of your character and behavior. Because they've put you into a bizarre, confusing and nonsensical situation and environment. It's like you're going down a never-ending tunnel with many twists and turns but never truly arriving at a final destination. You just keep finding more and more tunnels. You keep finding more connections or offshoots. You keep finding a thing that develops from something else. You've been forced to accept this wonderland from which it is difficult to free yourself. And you've had to accept the reality of the White Rabbit and the Cheshire Cat. Because you have to be present in the shared fantasy once they've invited you into it. The narcissist uses the shared fantasy to make you dependent on them. To make you unable to continue without them. Because first they idealize you. They represent you as perfect or ideal. Until you form an attachment with the idealized image. Which is what they later reflect back to you. But you never really formed an attachment with the narcissist. You just attached to an idealized image of yourself. Which the narcissist presented to you. They idealize you and then they reflect this idealized image back to you. Which is what you then attach to. You fall in love with yourself and this then creates the shared fantasy. But there is another effect of the shared fantasy. The shared fantasy originates in the mind and the other effect of it is the mental and emotional conflict where mental stresses cause you to experience physical symptoms due to disruptions of processes in the brain from psychological stress where at times you may find that your emotion, perception, and even movement are inhibited because the brain is unable to signal the body to voluntarily perform an action. The shared fantasy eventually causes you to develop a pain disorder attributed to shared psychosis. Because you are sharing a delusion with a narcissist. You are sharing an idiosyncratic belief or impression. Which is maintained. Despite being contradicted by reality or rational argument. Which then eventually causes you to take on their delusions. Because repetition fuels belief. Repetition makes something seem more true, regardless of whether it is or not. It creates an illusion of truth. It suspends your disbelief. It suspends your judgment. And it then gives them the ability to adopt an us versus them mentality. By making you believe in and follow the unrealistic ideas and practices of the shared fantasy which also affects the narcissist and causes them to go deeper and deeper into their own psychosis but there is an effect which only happens to the victim and that is your feelings of grief 
intense emotional pain such as sadness, guilt or anger, where you feel like you have lost something, where you feel like a part of yourself has been lost, where you have an inability to experience positive mood, and experience difficulty engaging in social activities. And these feelings never seem to go away. You constantly feel grief. You experience never ending pain and sadness because you're still in a trance. You're still attached to the shared fantasy. The shared fantasy keeps you in a half conscious state in which your ability to function involuntarily is suspended. It begins with a grooming stage where they love bomb you where they prepare and train you for a purpose. They induce in you a sleep-like altered state of consciousness where you have no conscious control over your own thoughts, which creates a disconnection between your thoughts, memories, feelings, actions, and a sense of who you are. You feel disconnected from the world around you and you may experience a partial loss of memory such as facts, information and experiences. You enter a state where your thoughts and feelings seem unreal or as though they don't belong to you. You may misinterpret reality or you may believe that you are misinterpreting reality. You may develop problems with judging reality because you have been manipulated by psychological means into doubting your own memory, perception and sanity because the shared fantasy is the opposite of reality which they created to prevent you from acting to prevent you from interacting with reality to keep you confined to a dreamlike state where you are unable to think or act because of the fantasy where you are unable to differentiate between what is real or not real until it gets to the point where your ability to interact with reality has been completely disabled which is when they will begin to subject you to a strong regular repeated pattern of movement they will use you to bad effect they will use external input to affect your brain. To keep you in a state where you are still capable of logical and consistent thought and speech, but operating from the reasoned and integrated structures and ideas that they've induced in you. They entrain you to brainwash you, to pressurize you into adopting radically different beliefs by using systematic and forcible means. They make you believe something by repeatedly telling you that it is true and preventing any other information from reaching you. They use external stimulus to entrain you to bring about an undesirable and unpleasant effect. They use a lot of repetition because it is all constructed and arranged to a plan. to create specific brainwave patterns to evoke enduring images, memories and emotions within you and cause you to resonate with and become an extension of the very person who is abusing you it causes you to become in sync with a narcissist because they have gained access to your brain they have taken over and generated brainwaves that are identical to their own. It causes you to become enmeshed, where personal boundaries are permeable and unclear, where you no longer have a distinct and independent existence. And even when you wake up from the hypnosis, 
they still have control over you because they have already entrained your brain. They have already caused specific brain waves to come into existence so that any time they repeat the doctrine of abuse, it generates these brain waves in your mind. So that they still have control over you, even when you're not under their hypnosis, you become a slave. You become an entity that merely exists to obtain information and applications for your programmer. You are available for use whenever or however they wish. The narcissist puts you in a trance. It starts with grooming. They prepare and train you for the purpose of inducing a dissociative state to cause a disconnect from reality and to lure you into the shared fantasy. They create brainwaves in your mind that reflect their own brainwaves until your minds become synchronized, until you share the same opinions and thoughts, which then regulates the narcissist. But for them to do that, they need to disable your freedom to govern yourself and control your own affairs. They need to fix their own ideas, feelings and opinions into your mind until your brain becomes a reflection and an imitation of your abuser's mind. When this happens, they regulate their emotions. It gives them a temporary state of mind and feeling by keeping you in a defenseless and suggestible state of mind where you don't have your own brainwave patterns to defend yourself. It's like they have infected your mind. They've colonized your thoughts by harmful thoughts and beliefs. They've regulated your emotions. They've regulated your state of mind and feeling. They've made you happy. They've made you unhappy. They've made you afraid. They've made you depressed. These emotions come from your abuser. It's external. It's not generated from within. They use intermittent reinforcement. It's like gambling. It creates an addiction. You try to predict the pattern of reward, but you don't realize that there is no pattern. It comes at random. But when you do experience the reward, it gives you a high which creates the obsession and the addiction. They're hot and cold. One minute they love you, and then the next minute they hate you. They verbally abuse you, which eventually results in you becoming an empty shell of who you used to be. Because now your internal regulation has been outsourced to the narcissist. Your thoughts and emotions are externalized. They come from outside of yourself. You lose your human qualities. You become a robot. You become a machine where you are waiting for your abuser to operate the various components of your mind. They decide how you're going to feel. 
They decide your state of mind. They even decide what you're going to think and when you're going to have a specific thought. The narcissist gains complete control of your mind through the use of the shared fantasy by putting you in a trance. It causes you to become a tool or a device that is used to carry out a particular function, which they can use whenever and however they choose to. They restructured your mind by activating some brainwave patterns and deactivating others. But you will still continue to develop feelings deriving from your circumstances, mood or relationships with other people. You will still develop instinctive and intuitive feelings. But it's not because they don't want to shut off these aspects of your mind. You may find that these aspects of your mind irritate them more than anything. Because these aspects of your mind are the very things that they cannot shut off. But they will put your emotions under their control so that your emotions no longer belong to you. They will feel like they still belong to you. But they don't. You have been persuaded and led to experience them. Your thoughts and emotions are nothing more than reflections of your abuser's thoughts and emotions because they have taken over your mind. So your brainwave patterns do not belong to you. But you experience it as if it's based on your own feelings, tastes or opinions. If the narcissist is anxious about something you will begin to feel anxious. If the narcissist is angry, you will begin to feel angry. You will become your abuser. But once the shared fantasy is over, you will experience a difficult situation because now you are disconnected from yourself. You lose your own perception. You lose your memory. You lose your identity. Because to have an identity, it needs to be protected by boundaries, which is how the abuser is able to control your mind. Because there are no boundaries. But you will only forget whatever your abuser wants you to forget. If they want to punish you, they will want you to remember the abuse. But if they're trying to groom you, they're going to want you to forget about the abuse. So your abuser decides what you will forget. The abuser has complete and absolute control. They choose in which direction you're going to dissociate. They choose how your mind handles information.
Thank you for watching. I hope this video resonate with you. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. If you would like to donate, my PayPal link is in the video description. Coaching inquiries, you can email me at coaching.narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.